Let's talk about this. There's four decisions I want to cover here in our final 20 minutes. Um, they came down in the last couple of months with decisions on gerrymandering, affirmative action, discrimination against LGBTQIA+, uh, members of our country, as well as striking down student loan forgiveness. I say that has suddenly become unforgiven. So let's talk about these and, and get some details. And by the way, this recording and this slide deck, we'll put this all up on our website, so we'll, you'll see that out in, in an email. Feel free to take notes, but you'll have access to these slides on our website later this week. So let's talk about gerrymandering. I'm gonna start on a positive note because the gerrymandering decisions that have come down from the Supreme Court have actually been good. The state level is where it's gone bonkers. So the states have been trying to produce the worst congressional maps you can find, completely diluting the black vote whenever, wherever possible. Alabama tried it. Uh, they had diluted the black power, or the power of black voters by drawing just one majority black district when there were enough voters for two. So Alabama split, what they call cracked, the black vote, separating them out so that they would not have a majority voice. It went to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court surprisingly and correctly struck that down, and now Alabama has to go back and redraw it. Yeah, that's good. That is actually good. That is, again, the, the Congress is Republican-led by now, by, uh, at the moment, but only by a dozen seats. It's not a lot of seats. And in some of them, like George Santos' seat, they're gone, you know, bye. That's gonna become Democrat. Lauren Boebert, her seat's gonna be gone. Bye, that's gonna become Democrat. Then you have another congressional Democrat, likely in Alabama. Louisiana had the same thing. The map has white majorities in five of six districts, all currently held by Republicans, despite the black people accounting for one third of the state population. One out of six congressional seats, one out of three population. That does not seem right, and therefore they may have to redraw it based upon a decision also by the Supreme Court. But the big one came from North Carolina, but even this was a mixed bag. So North Carolina's Supreme Court, state Supreme Court, had ruled six to three that the congressional maps that their legislators drew were gerrymandered. The North Carolina Republican lawmakers didn't like that. They said, listen here, when it comes to drawing state maps and other things about our elections, you state Supreme Court don't get a say in that. They called it the independent state legislator theory. Said that, nah, we have the final say, you judges don't have any say. They filed suit, it went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, nah, legislators, sorry, your Supreme Court does have say. And said, you know, their, their stance was valid. However, again, mixed bag. So while that independent state legislator theory was eliminated, and that's good because that means no other state can try to use that same line of thought, that provides us some safety. There's been some turnover in the state Supreme Court in North Carolina. It became uh, heavily Republican based. They actually brought suit again, and this time they overruled themselves in, in just about a year and reverse course, and now their congressional districts are allowed to stay anyway. So again, a, a loss and a win there, uh, but still our uh, federal Supreme Court came out with a really good decision. Now that hits home. Charles, go ahead. Well, in, in essence, the Supreme Court does not need to be applauded because they opened the gates for this to start with the night when they uh, repealed the 1965 Voting Rights Act uh, and took Section 5 out of there which essentially said that before any state can change their voting right laws, it has to go to the, uh, the Attorney General of the United States to approve. I think Nikki Haley and several other states sued, and then um, Section 5, which was the heart of the bill, which John Lewis marched on the Edmund Pettus Bridge for, that whole 1965 Voter Rights Act has been uh, uh, watered down along with uh, what you were talking about, the uh, student deal, the um, affirmative action, and a lot of the other things that are happening, it's just to roll back the laws that allow people to get to where they are now. But, but even what you're reading there and what you see in there, uh, the Supreme Court was to blame, you know, for that whole gate falling and all of that stuff coming out. That's right.
That's right. So this was the, the one little ray of sunshine in an otherwise dark term uh, for our, our federal Supreme Court, uh, creating problems that they themselves caused many years prior. South Carolina has a role to play here. And in October of this year, South Carolina has a racial gerrymandering suit that has been filed by the NAACP. Over in congressional districts one and six, uh, six is with James Clyburn and one is with Nancy Mace. They had redrawn those maps and had taken tens of thousands of black voters out of Nancy Mace's district and put them into Jim Clyburn's district. Now, Jim Clyburn already had solid voting in his district, and the District 1, remember that's where Joe Cunningham also was, it was considered a flippable district until they took 30, 40,000 black votes out of that district, and now it's solidly red. And the state, uh, a three-judge panel said, wait a minute, that was probably one of the most obvious cases of racial gerrymandering we have ever seen and allowed uh, the, that suit to be, a, to be heard and ruled in favor saying, no, nope, you have to go back and redraw those districts. Well, South Carolina Republican legislators didn't like to hear that. And so Alan Wilson, the attorney general, filed, took that suit all the way up to the Supreme Court. So the Supreme Court is now gonna hear this case in October. I would like to be hopeful based upon the three other decisions they've come regarding gerrymandering in other states, North Carolina, Louisiana, and Alabama, but you just never know. You never know. So this has been taken on the docket um, to be heard in October. The Supreme Court could have just refused to hear it, and then that other decision would have to stay and we'd have to redraw the districts. But no, in October it's going to be heard and those districts may need to get redrawn. We will wait and see. And you'll definitely uh, stay in tune with us. You'll hear about the updates.